Hey, 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 what's up, people? If you watched the uh, previous video that I posted where I was trying to get this 27-inch Philips uh, TV working, I mentioned that I wanted to try to see if I could possibly do like an RGB mod to it where I could add in uh, an input for like RGB and uh, sync signals so that I could use it with um, RGB stuff. Well, I've been messing with that and I've been kind of like going through um, like data sheets here for the, the chip that's inside of the, the TV set. And there's some uh, control registers here that actually set like the mode and uh, stuff like that. So I, I dumped out the um, little EEPROM that's on the board and the majority of it is, is uh, got a bunch of zeros. It does have like some data kind of scattered in a few places there. And so I did a few uh, logic captures of the I squared C bus to try to see if maybe I could figure out how to uh, get the um, uh, the RGB enabled on it. Um, but it's looking like maybe I'm a little bit over uh, my head in this and uh, I haven't figured out uh, anything just yet. But um, anyways, this besides the uh, point of this video, why do I have a PS2 here? Well, this is one of the few devices that I have around here that I could easily output RGB and sync signals from. And this is one that's, uh, it's worked fine for the most part. I have this uh, little cable here that I've kind of put together, just kind of um, uh, jerry-rigged so that I could uh, get the uh, RGB and sync signals out of it. And this is actually a cable that came with uh, one of these RGB to uh, HDMI uh, boards that you can like buy on eBay and stuff. And I know that this works because I have tried it. But the uh, PS2, however, decided to just kind of crap out on me here. And so I can't uh, use it to output uh, RGB at the moment. Uh, luckily, I do have another uh, second uh, PS2 uh, FAT that I can use for, uh, it's like a stunt double for this one. So I'm not at total loss here, but I would like to get this working. And I've, there's like no shortage of content around here. Something always goes bad or needs fixing or whatever. So anyways, we'll take a look at this today. And what it's doing is it's just not powering up. And if I take this cable here, uh, this is plugged into mains. So if I put it in right here and I were to turn this switch on, if uh, you're familiar with PS2s at all, you'll know that this little button here is supposed to turn red. Well, it's not turning red at all. So we can't say that it's going to be a button issue with this one or anything like that because it's just uh, appears that it's uh, not getting any power at all. Now, before it completely died on me, though, I, I did have this uh, network and uh, hard drive uh, that was uh, inserted here in the back. And it started doing this thing where if this was inserted with the hard drive and you tried to turn it on, it would just uh, shut itself off and you couldn't turn it back on again until you uh, completely removed power. So if you did remove it and you powered it up, then it would work totally fine. So I'm kind of thinking that it might be a power supply issue. And due to the fact that it just kind of seemed to like gradually uh, go bad, I'm thinking maybe, maybe capacitors. So I don't know if I'm going to have on hand what I need to uh, fix this. I might need to just uh, keep a list of parts that I'm going to need to uh, order here soon. But let's open it up and uh, see if we can figure it out. Uh, one thing I really do like that Sony did with these units is that they made these uh, the little feet removable. Or actually the, where the screws are that they're like easily uh, replaceable. So they're not like stuck on or anything like that. I'm just going to remove all the screws from the bottom and get the unit opened up and we'll try to get to the uh, power supply. Well, before we get to the power supply, though, I will leave it, um, the main board in there and uh, plugged in and we'll plug in power and we'll see if we're getting anything out of the power supply because there's like four pins that go from the uh, power supply board, which is like down. Where is it? It's like down in here. And so it's got like two grounds and then like two that I believe provide like 12 volts. So we'll see if there's anything uh, present at those pins, and we can go from there. Man, these have been sitting in there for quite a while. They're snapping as they're releasing, if you can hear it here. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so there's all the screws out of it. Flip it over, try to take the cover off. All right, there we go. And flip it over this way so I can unplug the... Oh, no, I don't need to unplug the little ca uh, ripping cable here for the front buttons and the LEDs. Just leave it like that. Let's see. Ah, this needs to come out. All right, that should allow this to kind of move out of the way here. I think, does that release the drive yet? Okay, I think I'm starting to remember. I think the entire chassis comes out, so I'll have to remove these screws off the controller ports. 
And I think I can actually leave the fan and the power connector in the back. So I'll just unplug or disconnect the ribbon cable from the controller ports. It's not like I need those at the moment to test the voltages. I'm going to pull gently on the ribbon here so that unplugs from the side. I can remove this now. There we go. There we go. There's the chassis. Okay. Remove it from the bottom case. Let's flip this over. Oh, I guess I can actually test it from the bottom. So let's see. Here is... Where are they? Something around here. There's the four pins I was talking about. I was going to test them from the uh, top side, but I can just do it here from the bottom. Okay, so these two pins are here. Those are going to be ground. And this here is the one that I believe should have like 12 volts. So let's see what happens when we flip the power switch on, which I'm going to do down here. So there we go. Now this power supply should be outputting something. It might not be a uh, 12 volts. So let's see. Here we go. Zero. Nada. Zilch. Okay, so power supply no good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's make sure we're actually getting something here on the uh, mains input. So uh, over in this section, and this is going to be a high voltage here. There's going to be probably about 165 volts right there, I believe. If I, Let me see. I think that's where the rectifier is on this side. So, yeah. So without touching anything here, uh, this section right in this area is all filtering and then we've got the rectification right there so those two big pins right there those are the uh that rect uh the rectified mains uh, capacitor so i'm going to change the range here on my multimeter i'll set it to 300 and let's see i'm not sure which side is positive and which one is negative off the okay this one's probably going to be positive just due to the fact that it goes directly to the transformer this negative here is probably going to go through the mosfet that's going to switch the transformer so I'm going to check it like this. So negative here and positive here. What do we have? 165 volts. So that is working. So it appears that the power supply itself is just not outputting any voltage. All right. Well, let's go ahead and remove it and see if there's anything obvious on it. I do want to let this discharge, though, because I want to get a zap there. So once this voltage here gets down to a low enough level, I'll take it out. And these little resistors right here, those are the bleeders for this capacitor so that it doesn't store a charge for too long. All right, in the 40s, that's not bad. I'll just leave it around there. I mean, it's going to keep discharging, but at least I can remove the board here now without like worrying about getting like a zap or anything like that. All right, that's all four screws off the board. Let's pull it out. And let's see. There's a dark area around that capacitor right there. That's probably leakage for sure. Yeah, it looks wet. So that capacitor right there is probably bad. These over here look kind of okay. All right, let's investigate that a little further. So thankfully, nothing in this area here looks corroded. But if that capacitor there is not able to uh, hold uh, whatever charge it's supposed to be, what is this value anyway? Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty crusty on there. I'm going to have to... Uh, take it out and uh, clean it up real well but yeah let's see what it tests like with the uh lcr meter and see how uh and how much of a bad shape it's in and then i'll see if i have a replacement that i can pop in there so let's uh get some tools over here ready all right so let's uh let's see it was right here so it's going to be these two yeah these two right here these two pins so put some flux right there okay so Suck that out. All right, it's loose. Okay, let's see, what is this? This is a 35 volt, 27 microfarad capacitor. And of course, that's gonna be a odd value that I don't have. And there's a much uh, closer look at it. So 35 volt, 27 microfarad. Yep, it looks pretty nasty. So this is definitely leaked. Let's see how it tests. All right, here we go. Let's see. So I'm going to hook the negative here, the positive right there. <laughs> Almost two picofarad. And let's see. What's the ESR on this? Okay. Oh, let's see. Let's change the frequency here. It's at one kilohertz. How about we do 120? 
2.2 <laughs> microfarad at 120 hertz. And this is going to let me select. There we go. ESR 4.06 K ohms. Uh, I pulled up a little chart here on the side. And this is uh, just like generic um, like capacitor values. So for, let's see, this was a 35 volt, uh, 27 microfarad. So it'd be like around here. We'd expect to see about 1.5 to like 1.2 ohms, somewhere in there. Maybe like 1.3. So <laughs> it's, uh, yep, it's definitely... Uh, on the crappy side. Well, like I said, I'm not going to have a, a 27 microfarad capacitor, but I might have a 22 or I kind of doubt I have any 33s. Uh, let me dig around and see what I have. So yeah, as I suspected, I don't have any uh, actual 27 microfarad capacitors, but I do have some 35 volt uh, 22 microfarad. And I mean, this should work. Next time I place a, a par um, parts order, I'll maybe throw in a few of like this value in there just to have them on hand. But uh, I want to clean up that little spot there before I install the new one. Oof, probably should have blown all the dust off of this supply first, but oh well. I'll clean it and then I'll dust it. Maybe while I'm at it, I'll check these capacitors also and see what they're what they t taste like, <laughs> what they, what they test like. And I think some of these I do have on hand. It's a uh, 16 volt, uh, 1,000 microfarad right there, and then there's the other ones. Actually, both of these are 1,000 microfarad, 16 volt. I'm guessing one of them is probably supposed to be like a really low ESR value one. Maybe these like gold ones right here. Um, that one there is just a, a 20, uh, 220 microfarad 16 volt. Yeah, I'll probably just do those off camera and I'll let you know what, what they, they test like. I keep wanting to say taste like. All right, so I tasted all the capacitors that I removed from the board. And the two 1000 microfarad ones, those are all like within specs. They, they taste, uh, they taste, I need to eat something, man. <laughs> they test, Jesus. They test okay. These are okay. The 220, however, that one, um, it's a bit below what it's 80% um, value should be, which would be like about uh, 176 uh, microfarad. So I'll replace that one while I'm in here. I do have uh, some. A 220 a 16 volt one so that's uh, this one right there and as uh, far as the uh, 27 one i have some 33s at 35 volts and this one here actually measures about 27 microfarad so it's um, it's a bit closer so i'll just stick this one in there and that should work just fine so i'll just go ahead and pop everything back in uh, resolder it in place and then we can give it a test again and see if it'll work all right just give this a cleaning Okay, and I'm just going to verify that I didn't solder anything in backwards because that could be disastrous. So I got all the negatives on the negative side. Yep, that looks pretty good. This didn't quite clean up as well as I wanted to, but I think it's because some of this, like marker right there that I smeared. So, oh, well, whatever. That's not a big deal. All right, and we know that the fuse is good because we were able to test the uh, high voltage at that capacitor there. So that fuse is not a problem. So let's go ahead and pop this back into the um, chassis and see if we have anything at the output now. I'll go without the screws there for the time being. I'm going to go ahead and just hit the switch off. Okay, let's turn this on. There we go. All right, let's see. Do we have anything at the output now? Hopefully we do. So negative and positive. There we go. That's what we should be looking at. So it's almost 12 volts there. So. That should be working. I'll go ahead and put the um, uh, chassis here back into the uh, bottom of the case, and we'll plug in the the uh, buttons and the and the LEDs. Let's see if it comes up. I'm gonna turn this off and plug it for now. Well, I might as well put the screws back on because this should work now. All right, I'm just gonna try to put this in from the bottom here. All right, I think some forceps would come in handy right about now. All right, there we go. I try to be really careful here not to break this ribbon cable that goes off to the to the front panel buttons there. And there we go. It dropped in. So that should be everything we need just to test it out. So let's see what happens. Plug power back in. And here we go. I'm going to hit the power button. Oh, it's already on. <laughs> yep, there we go. So now it's working. Let's see if it turns on. Sure enough. 
that was it that little tiny capacitor <laughs> so yep that'll do it let's make sure that it actually turns on with the hard drive and the network adapter in place because this like i said this was an issue it wouldn't power up with that on so flip the switch back on led is red let's see there it goes And I heard the disk drive spin up, so, yep, it's working. And there we go, tuck the ribbon back in, that in. Okay, so I just need to put these screws back on. And the bottom screws, let's unplug it for now. All right, so that's all the screws reinstalled. Now I just gotta put all these little covers and feet back on. All right, I'll hook it up. We'll give it a quick test run to make sure that it's all working correctly. And that should be it for this video. <laughs> All right, so I've got this all hooked up here. The LEDs on. I've got the that uh, RGB to HDMI board hooked up, but this board kind of sucks. I seem to lose um, sync. I'm not sure if it's losing sync here or if it's something with the HDMI, but it tends to cut out a bit and it seems kind of a jerky. Um, you'll probably see what happens here when I turn it on, but let's go ahead and capture that now. And well, here I'll hit the power button and then we'll switch over to the capture. So. Should come up here in a sec. Uh, there it goes. And I have a Pimuk boot here on this uh, memory card, so that way it can boot off the hard drive, and that way I know it's working. So yeah, there it goes. So let's see. Let me go here to HD loader. And you can see right there, it's a little jerk. It's like jumping up and down a bit. That's not the uh, PS2, that's that um, RGB to HDMI card. But it's working, so it was pretty much uh, down to the um, that little capacitor on the power supply just being bad. Like I said, it, it wouldn't even um, turn on with the hard drive installed, and now it's uh, booting off of it just fine. Even though it still takes a bit of time, it definitely boots a lot faster off the hard drive than it does off disks. Okay, so I had to restart the PS2. I guess Burnout 3, for some reason, doesn't like the RGB output. But I know Gran Turismo was working. So, uh, yeah, there it goes. Now it's loading. So, yeah, this is working. So, I think we're just going to leave it at that. And, see, it's kind of <laughs> jerky there. That's what I was talking about with that um, RGB board. But... Yeah, this works, and it's all running off the hard drive. So, yeah, that was uh, pretty much it. Just had to replace that one little capacitor in the power supply, and <laughs> it's totally fine again. Thankfully, this was a pretty quick video, and I didn't have to sit there and, like, fiddle too much with this thing. So, uh, if you made it to this uh, point, uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys around the bench. I'm not going to hit the bench because I don't want to shake the hard drive, but there we go. See you guys later.